In this video, we're going to continue our map generation and use a flood algorithm to detect disconnected areas. Let's begin. Hello and welcome. I'm Banana Hammer and this channel is all about making games. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe so that I can make more videos and reach more people. Last time, we used Wave Function Collapse to aid in our map generation and we got as far as generating a few basic biomes and some buildings. This time, we're going to find disconnected areas on our map by using a flood fill algorithm. This will help us in the next step when we place doors in our buildings. If you haven't been following along up to this point, that is okay. This method will work on any 2D array tile based setup. If you want to take a deeper look, I've included the project files in a link below in the description. Alright, so we've got these buildings, but no way to enter them because they don't have any doors. What we want to do is check the map for these disconnected areas so later on we can connect them to the rest of the map with doors. For this, we'll use a flood fill algorithm. Flood fill is an algorithm used to determine a bounded area connected to a given node in a multi-dimensional array. The paint bucket tool in painting programs is a good example of the flood fill algorithm at work. There are many different implementations of flood fill including stack based recursive, span fill, and so on. I chose a stack based version because it made the most sense to me when reading it, but you can use whatever version you like. In our version of this algorithm, we want to see if each tile we encounter is an orphan tile. An orphan tile is defined as a walkable tile that can't be reached via our starting point and the flood fill, meaning that it and any walkable neighbors are completely surrounded by impassable tiles. We start out by assigning every tile to an orphan tiles list. Whenever we visit a tile, we remove it from the list as it can't be an orphan. If a tile is not walkable, then we check the next tile on the stack. If it is walkable, we push the adjacent tiles in all four cardinal directions to the stack and continue. When I was working on this, it helped me to visualize it literally as water being stopped by walls. So if it's a little confusing, try thinking of it that way and see if it helps. In our map generator class, we're going to add a new method, flood fill map. This method needs a few input parameters. The map we're working on and a starting point is a vector 2. We'll make a stack called tiles to keep track of the tiles we need to check. Next, we'll create a list of tiles called orphan tiles and we'll initialize it by passing all the tiles in the map to it. The idea here is to remove tiles from the orphan list as we reach them. If the tile is reachable, then it is not an orphan and does not belong in the list. We'll get our start tile from the map. And we'll push it onto the stack. Now what we want to do in this method is run until all the tiles in the stack have been checked. So let's add a while loop. While tiles dot count is greater than zero. Okay, so now we'll keep checking tiles as long as the stack is not empty. Let's get our current tile by popping it off the stack. And let's get its coordinate. Since we're accessing data from current tile, let's put a null check before it just to be safe. Next, let's check if this tile is in orphan tiles. If it's not, we don't care about processing it and we'll move on to the next tile on the stack. If it is, we want to remove it from orphans so we don't process it again. Next, we'll check if the current tile is walkable. If it isn't, then we can't go any further and we'll move on to the next tile on the stack. 
If it is walkable, we want to get to the tile's neighbors in the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. I'll declare a variable check tile and get the tile to its left by passing in a vector 2 with the x coordinate decremented by 1. Then I'll pass it to a new method, add to flood tiles. Add to flood tiles is a method that just checks to see if the tile is null and that it is in the orphan tiles list before pushing it onto the stack. This keeps us from having files in the stack that we are just going to skip anyways if we process them. It also keeps the code a little bit neater in flood fill map. Okay, let's add the other three tiles. And that loop is done. Last thing we want to do is return the orphan tiles list. And we'll need to change this from void to list tile. Back to the generate local map method. What we want to do is pick a starting point on the map that is walkable. So let's start at 0, 0. If it's not walkable, then I start checking adjacent tiles until I find a walkable tile. While not start is walkable. Alright, let's get the coordinate from start. And let's get the tile above it. If start is null, we'll increase on the x-axis and continue. Now let's make a list of tiles called orphan tiles. And then we can assign the returned orphans from flood film map to orphan tiles. While we run this, it's not possible for us to tell if this is working. We could use print statements to tell us how many orphans there are and where they are located, but that would get old real quick. Instead, we can use gizmos to better visualize how the flood fill works. The gizmos class allows you to draw lines, spheres, cubes, icons, textures, and meshes into the scene view to use as a visual debugging aid while developing your project. Let's go with the board class and add a new method, onDrawGizmosSelected. This method will run whenever we select the board game object in the scene view. If we called onDrawGizmos instead, the gizmos would always draw whether board was selected or not. You can use either one. What we want to do here is highlight all the orphan tiles. Wherever there are orphan tiles, red squares will appear over them. So let's get the orphans from our map. We we'll have to make orphan tiles public in map generator. If orphans is null or the count is less than one, let's return. Okay, now let's create a for each loop to highlight each orphan. Set gizmos color to red.
get the orphan coordinates so we can tell the square where to be drawn. And then we'll call gizmos.drawcube, pass in the chord, and the size to 1 with the vector 3. Hit play a few times and let's see if this is working properly. Okay, it looks like the squares are sort of where they need to be. The problem here is that we define the center at the orphan's coordinate, but our tiles have a bottom left pivot point. So we need to offset these red squares a bit to line up with the tiles. We'll do that by defining a center variable and adding 0.5 to the X and Y coordinates. Now we'll pass center in to draw a cube instead of cord. And as you can see, the red squares are lined up with the orphans and it looks like everything is working properly. Next video, we use pathfinding to connect the orphans to the rest of the map. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials and post any questions you have in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.